Hey, how you doing? This is Chris Wire from Hazmat IQ, and we're going to talk to you today about the chemical of the month for the above the line, below the line, the technician program. So what we're going to need to do to do the training this month, we're going to need our charts, the 2013 version, and I'm going to need my NIOSH that we passed out to you in class. Remember, this is just refresher training for what we're trying to do, is practice on the system, and if you don't practice it, you're going to lose the skill set. It's a tangible skill set. So the chemical we're going to run this month, acrylamide. So remember the system, go back to chart five, let's review the four steps that we need to do to be able to accomplish the Hazmat IQ system. Step one within the system is sizing it up. Is it above or is it below the line? That's gonna give me that initial prediction for how this is gonna behave. Step two, I'm gonna verify my prediction. I'm gonna look at those key chemical and physical properties and I'm gonna verify my prediction from step one. Step three, we're gonna identify our PPE and our meters. Our PPE is somewhat driven by who we work for. If I'm a firefighter, I'm gonna start out in turnout gear. If I'm military, industry, something else that doesn't have turnout gear, I need my multi-threat suit, I need my level B, I need something other than my turnout gear. Step four is straight up mission. Red light, green light. We're gonna go in there, we're either gonna do rescue or plumbing. What is plumbing? Anything that's not rescue. So let's go ahead and get started. Acrylamide. If I look at chart two, is acrylamide in the list? and it's not. So since it's not in the list, I'm going to use my above the line size up. Remember, that's my initial prediction for how things behave. And in that size up, I'm going to predict this is a gas, hot zone 300 feet. The vapors, they're heavier than air. It's going to have an LEO. It's going to have an LEO. It'll be flammable. It'll have a flash point. It polymerizes. It has an IP. I can see it with my PID. It's corrosive. It'll turn my pH paper red. It contains fluorine. It's radioactive. It's toxic in parts per million, and it's air and water reactive. That's my initial size up for above the line. What am I going to wear? Turnout gear, SCBA. What meters am I taking with me? All of them. Here, I'm going to go to chart three, and when I get there, all I'm trying to do is take that initial above the line size up and tweak it down. Can I eliminate any hazards because I have the name of the chemical? When I get into chart three, the first thing I'm going to do is start in the upper left hand corner and I'm going to look at the flammable char clue box. Is it in there? Is any part of it in there? And I look in the box, the flammable char clue box, and I see a krill. Because it's in there, I'm now going to come down into the last names. And when I look at the naming clues and I look at red eight and I see enzymamide, now I have acrylamide. Because this has the potential to be a polymer, I would call that a red eight P. What are the hazards of a red 8P? It's flammable, it's toxic, and it has the potential to polymerize. As I work my way through the chart now, and I look at the, and I look at the meter cockpit, I've got my meters that are listed in red with the red lights, and I've got my green light meters working from left to right. We now are able to eliminate. This is not radioactive. There's not an X in the box. Is it corrosive? As I look across there, I see a blue X. So I expect my pH paper to turn blue. I have an X for the temp gun. I have an X for the CGI, the LEL meter. I have PID, I have FID. I have no X in the Freon box. So what does that tell me? I'm able to eliminate that this doesn't contain fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. None of those are present. Do they make a tube or a chip for the amine or the amide family? Yes, there's an X there. And it's no on a KI. So I'm through. Hazards, meters, predicted hits on those meters, and now we're over into the PPE column. And when I look at that, my number one choice is because it's flammable, I want to wear turnout gear. If I don't have turnout gear, could I wear plastic? Absolutely. The only difference is going to be I get out at 1% of the LEL versus 10% of the LEL. That's our size up, folks. We looked at it. We went from just knowing a name to predicting it to above the line to looking at chart three, looking at the last name, getting to a red 8P, and narrowing down, chipping away at some of those hazards. Now what we're able to predict is it's flammable, toxic, corrosive, has the potential to polymerize. Look all the way out there on the right on chart three, and you're gonna see it says, book, two minute tweak. That's what we have to do now. All right, so we're gonna go to page seven in the NIOSH book, and we're gonna look at acrylamide. Acrylamide's on the bottom there. Now we predicted acrylamide was a gas. I look at the physical description, it says white crystalline odorless solid. No worries. I go from predicting it at a gas at 300 feet, this is now a solid 75 feet. Better or worse? 
That's better in my world. Is it explosive? I look up at the DOT guide number. Do I see 112, 113, 114? No, those aren't there. I can eliminate that hazard as well. Radioactive. Chart 3 already told us it wasn't radioactive, but let's confirm it. I can look at the DOT box. Remember the clues for radioactivity, 161 through 166. If you don't remember those, look on chart 6. Those are the clues or the cheat sheet for the cheat sheet. So when I look in there, this is guide number 153. This is not radioactive. That just confirms what we predicted from step 1. Does it polymerize? And there's three places I can look for polymerization. The first place I can look is look at the DOT guide number. Is there a P next to the 153? In this instance, there is. Look up at the formula. Do you see an equal sign in the formula? There is. And I can look down at the incompatibility and reactivity box under that huge, bold Latin term that says note, which really just means note, read me. And when I look on there, it says note, may polymerize violently when, upon melting. So I see the word polymerize or polymerization. So this has three of the clues that tells me this could polymerize. All three don't need to be present. Any one of the three is a clue. What tells me that it is or is not polymerizing out in the field is do I hit this with the temp gun? Do I see the temperatures actively increasing? Right? That's what tells me the reaction is actually occurring. We already looked at this initially, but is there F? When I look up at the formula, do you see any, th any capital letter Fs with no, no lowercase letters to the right of it? In this instance, no, there is no fluorine in acrylamide. pH is a toughie. It's not anywhere on the book, but what did chart 3 tell us? Chart 3 told us this is going to turn my pH paper blue. Since this is a solid, the only way that's going to turn my pH paper blue if it was mixed into solution. Is it flammable? We predicted it was. We looked down at the LEL. It's got a question mark. Question mark means yes. We know it's flammable. What meter do we use to measure flammability? We use the LEL meter. Is this heavier or lighter than air? It's a solid. That's kind of an easy one. But if we want to prove it scientifically, look at the molecular weight. It's 71, air weighs 29. This is definitely heavier than air. What does it do when it mixes with water? We talked about air and water reactivity. How soluble, insoluble, what does that all mean? When I look at the solubility of this, is it greater than 10%? Yes, it is. This is water soluble, but does it react with water? And I looked down at the incompatibilities and reactivities, and I don't see anything in there about air or water. So I'm good on both air and water reactivity. Can I see this with my PID? Most PIDs have a standard lamp 10.6. When I look at the IP for acrylamide, the IP is 9.5. So this is a PID yes. It's an FID yes because when I look up at the formula, I see CH in the formula and I had acryl in the flammable char clue box. Remember, if any part of the name is in the flammable char clue box, that's telling me it's got carbon and hydrogen in it. It's another way of saying yes to the FID. So that's our size up. We've completed our size up. We've tweaked what we need to tweak. We've verified everything. And now all we have to do, put on our gear, go down range, play red light, green light. I will continue to go forward until my meters tell me it's not safe. How do I know it's not safe? I'm either at twice background radiation. My F and pH paper, the F paper goes from pink to yellow. pH paper goes from red or blue. I've got actively increasing temperatures on a temp gun. I'm at greater than 10% of the LEL if I'm wearing turnout gear, 1% or, or greater if I'm wearing plastic. Folks, that's it for this month's Chemical of the Month. Uh, until next month, be safe, continue learning, and uh, if you have any questions, you need more information about Hazmat Q, Chemical of the Month, or you run on an interesting call that you'd like to see us make part of next month's Chemical of the Month, contact us at info at So this is Chris signing off. We'll see you next month.